Thank you. God bless America. It's the greatest nation in the world. You want me to say it again? <laughs> well, who are you with? We're with Representative Robinson. Do you mean to tell me you're doing something for once? Uh, yes, for <laughs> once. For once. You, you got to get to know me. I throw all kinds of swords and all that. That doesn't mean anything. He does. This actually happens very frequently. Korean war vets will come up to say, Oh my God, are you Korean? Well, Korea is an amazing country, and I was in Korea during the war. The Korean veterans, four times a year, offer veterans to come there free of charge. They talk about how appreciative Koreans are of their service, and I think that that's really important. But it's also weird because that's not an era that I grew up in at all, and I think of myself as being an American. Your parents were from Korea. No, I'm adopted. Well, regardless, you still have Korea. I am. I think there's sometimes an expectation for me to be really grateful. Being the first Korean American elected to the legislature here in Massachusetts, and I, I worried that I wasn't going to be representative enough of the experience that a lot of other non-adoptee Korean Americans had had. Nice talking to you today. Good to see you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>
Can I go swimming? Uh, it is raining outside. So what? No, you're not going swimming today. Okay. What about coffee? Because it, it's not quite... What time? Oh, coffee. It is 2.30. If you have coffee, you're going to never fall asleep tonight. Okay, oh, I don't... No, there's no internet. No, of course there's no internet. We're in a car. Can you put down the window? That's not going to change whether there's internet or not. <laughs> it was important to me to adopt, and I was really lucky to meet Matt, who was like, well, you know, I adopted my dog, and I would never get my dog from a breeder, so yeah, why wouldn't we want to help the kid from foster care? Hi. Honey is the most trusting. Bunny has some trust issues, but I'm a bit scared. You have to earn their trust. Usually by food is the best way to earn their trust. Hi. But me and my dad have lessons to have them trust me more. We do them on Saturdays and Sundays. Usually um, our lessons last 20 minutes, but he had to go out of town, so. Matt and Marissa are just absolutely the best of friends, and I don't think he could have had a kid that's more like him. And I don't think we could have had a kid that's less like me, which is really important and good, because I would have totally pressured the crap out of her. Oh my god, where did that come from? <laughs> that is... It's so cute! Oh, and that's a picture of me at age two reading the newspaper. Or so reading, cute. we'll say. Reading. I couldn't read yet. Almost, but not yet. I'm sure my mother would be happy to regale you with tales of when I first learned to read and so on and so forth. So this is the first photo album that we have of Maria's memories. Um, this is the first picture we received of her and she was seven weeks old. These are the very first moments of when we held her. It was, I, I had tears in my eyes. We wanted her so badly. Eight-month-old Maria is this year's Christmas gift to her parents, Stephen and Denise Duamey. We always wanted children. I mean, we talked of having children before we were married. And when we found out we couldn't, uh, neither one of us could really uh, accept that, that we, you know, would be a childless couple all of our lives. And we did, uh, I guess, briefly talk about other alternatives, but we felt they weren't for us. Uh, we felt adoption was really the only avenue for us. My parents are the coolest people. Don't tell them I said that. They'll, they'll really go to their heads. But I was raised in this gigantic Irish, French, German, Catholic family. But it's funny because you can always figure out where I am in all the pictures. And we just, you know, wanted to try to give her every opportunity that we could and we always wanted her to be happy and uh, that's really all we want for her is to be happy and successful and she really does do anything she puts her mind to. Bless us, O Lord, in these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless us, O Holy Spirit. Amen. So does it get hurt? Oh, I had been working at a trade association, Clean Energy Group, for about eight years, and I was a technical expert traveling all over the country. I got to go to lots of state capitals, and then the opportunity came up to run for state representative when our previous rep passed away suddenly, and it was a, a really immediate decision because the election was coming up pretty quickly, and at that point in time, we had been fostering Marissa for a few years, and I was frustrated and annoyed at the whole process and feeling like it should have been easier, it should be better for the kids who are actually involved. And so I said, all right, let's, let's see what we can pull together in the next 100 days. If nothing else, it's just one summer. And if it doesn't work out, I'll at least have had a really cool experience. All of these houses are in my district, and so we've knocked on the doors of Every single one of them. There were a solid handful, maybe five people, who knocked a lot of doors for me. Norma, she was one of them. Hello. All right, Higgins, let's go. I met Maria when she first started doing some 
work with the Framingham Democrats and when she indicated that she was interested in the state representative seat, I was happy to jump in and see if we could make it happen. All right. Yeah. Right, Higgins? Yes? <laughs> and a lot of us came forward to help Maria because we really liked her, respected her for a lot of reasons, and wanted to see her as our next state representative. It was very exciting because I got to go to all these campaigns with her and really help her and support her. But at the same time, it was very nerve wracking because she would have no time to really hang out. It was very serious to her and she wanted to make sure that she had every time to make sure that she could fulfill this opportunity. And on September 4th, I said, eh, win or lose, it was a really cool experience. There was just yelling and screaming and clapping and all that stuff. And we were all super proud of her because she'd put in so much work. I won the primary. There was no opposition in the general. And suddenly, like, we were off. And then the fun really began. I thought that was going to be the hard part. That was not the hard part. Shane, what's the number for the bill? Um, it is... 2472, S2472. I find that Massachusetts legislature is steeped in tradition and history in a way that a lot of other states aren't. In part because we are the oldest, we predate the United States Congress. And because of that, making change is actually a lot harder. So we're gonna go this way. And so it's it tends to be one where we've continued to do things the way that they've been done in large part because that's how they've been done. So so today we're in session. So you can't come past past here. But I'm gonna go in right over there. We'll see you in a bit. Oops. Except that one's locked. So I bet they make us go in over there. Ha <laughs> ha we tried so hard to make that look nice. It didn't work. I'll jump in Thank you. Hello. I don't think I've ever introduced Hello. myself. Hello. I'm Mike Cushmary. Mike, it's so nice to meet you. Very Maria nice Robinson. You well. And I, I was really surprised when I actually got to the legislature of, oh, wow, this doesn't reflect the same diversity that I see in all the rest of Massachusetts. Yeah, Hello, how's it going? Good, how are you? We're, we only just in this last election in, here in Massachusetts made it to 30% female. And they actually say that once you hit 30% in a legislative body is when you start to see larger systemic change. So it's, it's taken us a while. Has to be an order on this matter, 146 members voting in the affirmative, 14 in the negative, the bill is passed to be engrossed. Being Korean American is really tough, especially as an adoptee, because I'm not embraced as being fully Korean by a lot of people. I don't speak the language. And then at the same time, not fully American either, because I'm not from here. I wasn't born here. You know, we just plan on presenting it in a positive uh, manner that she is adopted and she's special and we, we chose her, we wanted her. You know, they encourage you to keep their culture alive. As my mother would say, you can do anything you want except become president of the United States of America. So there is still a ceiling uh, associated there. So not always feeling fully Korean or fully American, but creating my own space for myself. All the time. It's, it's like homecoming. <laughs> The Asian Caucus, at first I wasn't sure whether it was going to be important or not, but I, the longer that I'm here, the more I realize how important it is, especially over the past year with the anti-Asian violence. We've spent a lot more time talking and getting to know each other. Well, funny thing is, last March, March 20th, 2020, you know, the Asian Caucus, some people of color, as well as various Asian leaders, stood in front of the steps of Stados and told them that COVID-19 
anti-Asian wave is here and it's gonna come like you've never seen before regarding this wave of hate. And that's what's particularly frightening the community right now because you do nothing wrong but stand there. You are now a victim by nature of who you are. You heard about the attack in Chinatown? No. A 67 year old grandma was attacked in Chinatown. It was Quincy? Uh, in Boston. I think having mentors in the State House helping us navigate different things um, is really phenomenal and, and an asset that, that we have. To approve those? Second. Third. All those in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Aye. So it turns out that being a state rep is very much a full-time job. There are events all of the time. And I'm Maria. It's really cool to be here with all of you. Yeah, her days are usually busy. The only time I see her then is dinner time because she's always on meetings. Hello. Hello. How are you? Welcome to my humble abode. Thank you for coming. It's definitely hard. I don't see my family nearly as much as I would like to. And I hope as much as they would like to see me. Uh, sometimes I'm I'm just in and out um, and just saying hello, dropping a, a quick hug and then out the door to the next event. There we go. Thank you, Ron. She has so much work and for her to balance work and home life is very inspiring. Ron, thanks for taking us out. It's such a beautiful day. I'm very proud of my mom because she's done so much for the community and so much even for me. She's made a very big impact in my life. State rep work, definitely in the job description. There's no job description. <laughs> you can do anything you want to do. You can be anybody you want to be. It doesn't matter what you look like, if you speak a different language. If you try hard enough, you could exceed anything at all. If you wanted to be politician, like my mother, you may do that. It doesn't matter if people are trying to tell you you're Korean, you're not good enough, if people are racist towards you. You are you, and that's all you have to believe. This is one of my favorite places in Framingham. It's Cushing Memorial Park, and it's really lovely. It, we're right next to the downtown area that's incredibly busy, and then to have a park right here is, is pretty amazing. Um, so we interviewed Marissa. <laughs> Can you talk to me about the example you want to set for her as a as a woman in politics, even? Of course. Okay. Uh, so for me, um, I think it's really important to show all sorts of young girls what they can do, and then anything is possible. Here's our tree. <laughs> So maybe about 18 months ago, we planted this tree uh, that we donated to the city of Framingham. And it was like a little bit taller than me then. So it's, it's made some progress. It's, it's weathered the pandemic a little bit better than the rest of us have. Fortunately, I think Marissa has this <laughs> well uh, of confidence that I will never have. <laughs> Are you gonna it's run for right? office? Yes, it's very, I want to be Senate, but it's very <laughs> impressive how much the I want to make sure that she knows that she can do great things. Because I, I really believe that she can do anything that she wants to do. Oh my God, I've turned into my mother. <laughs> this is what my mom is like when she talks about me. This is embarrassing. Um, but I really want to set an awesome example for her. And I know that it means being way, missing some things. But uh, I think she knows that what I'm doing is important and it's trying to help other kids, trying to help other kids who are like her. Um, and I hope that she gets that. And I'm the best. <laughs>